Why do we worry about medical imaging and radiation safety? One of the big reasons is, as of the year of 2019, there are no uniform national standards regarding who may operate radiation producing imaging systems or what minimum training they should have. With ionizing radiation, we worry about the damage to a nucleus of a cell of the DNA, which can possibly cause cancer. But does this happen? The nonlinear threshold theory, which was formulated after the 1940s and World War II and the utilization of the atomic bomb, has proven to be scientifically inaccurate. After 60 years, we understand that the minimal amount of radiation used in diagnostic imaging does not meet the threshold for causing cancer. Under some rare circumstances of prolonged, high-dose exposures, x-rays can cause other adverse health effects, such as skin erythema or reddening of the skin, skin tissue injury, and birth defects following in utero exposure, but this is at very high doses, not the dose that we normally use in diagnostic imaging. At exposure levels associated with most medical imaging procedures, including most CT procedures, these adverse effects do not occur. Unfortunately, there is no maximum legal standard of exposure to patients. In reality, low-dose radiation does not cause, but more likely helps, prevent cancer. It must be noted and appreciated that radiation is an extremely weak carcinogen, even at relatively high doses, let alone at the low doses associated with medical imaging. The American Nuclear Society and Health Physics Society position is that for high-dose radiation, ionizing radiation exposure, there is a risk of cancer. But for low dose, below 10 rem, which includes occupational and environmental exposures, the risks of health effects are either too small to be observed or are non-existent. Even as an occupationally exposed worker, we're allowed 50 millisieverts per year maximum in the dose that we receive. 50 millisieverts is equal to 5 rem. This is substantially below the 100 rem level or threshold that causes cancer. Putting this in perspective, we can receive an occupational dose of 50 millirems per year whereas our own body produces radioactive materials of about 40 millirems per year on average. We are constantly being bombarded by cosmic radiation and producing radiation within our own body. So therefore, the amount of radiation that we limit in diagnostic exposure range, or ionizing radiation we use in this range, is so small as to be insignificant if used correctly. The word stochastic means probability. So when we look at the possibility or probability of getting cancer from ionizing radiation, we're looking at the stochastic effects of ionizing radiation. We've known about the carcinogenic effects of ionizing radiation since 1902, and radiation-induced cancer was first described at that time. Actual scientific data does not enable us to show a risk of cancer with less than 100 millisieverts by acute irradiation or an exposure of 100 millisieverts or greater could have the probability of causing cancer. Since there are no controls on how much radiation that we can produce for a patient, then we do have a question as to what is the probability of the patient and the radiographer receiving a dose large enough to cause cancer. In that diagnostic range, if ionizing radiation is used appropriately, 
the probability is almost zero. The minimal amount of exposure that could cause the probability of cancer occurring in tissue of humans is 100 millisieverts. In 2016, the Canadian government, trying to measure the lifetime exposure to medical ionizing radiation from medical imaging, reported the results of a study that showed only 14.94 millisieverts were the lifetime or mean lifetime average for patients who receive doses of radiation for medical purposes. The patient is in the direct beam, but the radiographer is not. We never stand in the direct beam. Healthcare professionals working with medical imaging radiation receive their dosage from the scatter that is emitted from the patient's body. The patient has a direct dose. The person utilizing the equipment gets an indirect dose from the scatter. Scatter radiation exposure is the most common type of exposure healthcare workers will receive in diagnostic radiology. It is generally reduced to one one thousandth the exposure or direct exposure that the patient is receiving if you are standing one meter or three feet away from the patient. So the patient is receiving a minimal exposure to do the examination and you are receiving one one thousandth the amount of exposure that the patient is from scatter radiation if you are three feet away from the patient. Healthcare workers wear protective gear and also a monitoring badge for radiation safety. As you can see, the protective gear picks up about 99% of the scatter radiation being emitted by the patient. So the amount of radiation actually recorded by the healthcare worker is very minimal. The normal exposures within the diagnostic range actually mean that both the patient and the radiographer or healthcare professionals performing the exams are quite safe. This is Mark Struthers saying thank you for your time and attention.